The classic question, should you bulk, cut, or maintain? Each of these energy balance states has their place, but each will be appropriate at different times and for different people. Let's explore how to decide which energy balance state is right for you. First, let's quickly recap what bulking, cutting, and maintaining actually means. This refers to the difference in energy intake relative to energy expenditure. When energy intake is consistently greater than expenditure on average over time, weight gain will occur. And when this is achieved with the intent to maximize muscle growth, this is referred to as bulking. When energy intake is consistently less than expenditure on average over time, weight loss will occur. And when this is achieved while simultaneously trying to preserve muscle mass, this is referred to as cutting. And when energy intake is equal to expenditure on average over time, body weight will be maintained. And as the name implies, this is referred to as maintaining. It should also be noted that when using these terms, it is implied that resistance training is being performed simultaneously. So for the rest of this video, it can be assumed that resistance training also applies when discussing the different energy balance states. First, let's discuss when would it be a good idea to cut. Well, the entire purpose of cutting is to reduce body fat. Without a calorie deficit, fat loss will be minimal in most cases. Even if we are performing resistance training, we usually aren't going to see large magnitudes of fat loss by maintaining. This is because any fat loss occurring while maintaining body weight would be a result of muscle growth. And in most cases, we don't observe large magnitudes of muscle growth over short-term timeframes, so we are likely to only experience minimal fat loss. For example, this study compared the effects of resistance training, a calorie deficit, or a combination of both on body composition changes. It was found that after three months, the two groups in a deficit lost more body fat compared with the group maintaining body weight. It is possible in some cases to achieve large magnitudes of muscle growth in short-term timeframes and therefore see significant fat loss simultaneously. This could occur in beginners or those returning to training after a long layoff. But these are fairly unique scenarios, and this would only be for a short time frame. And even then, if body fat is far beyond what we are trying to get to, we will still likely need to cut to get there. So we would pretty much want to cut any time we have significantly more body fat than we would like. As a general rule, I'd recommend cutting for males above around 20% body fat, and for females above around 30% body fat. And of course, it is also recommended to perform resistance training to preserve as much lean mass as possible while losing weight to maximize the proportion of lost weight coming from fat mass. Next, let's discuss when we should bulk. For most people, the purpose of bulking is usually to build more muscle mass. And some even argue that without bulking, it is impossible to build muscle. And it is true that gaining weight will increase the magnitude and rate that we are able to build muscle mass via resistance training. Although in most cases, we will also gain body fat too. As an extreme example, this study compared body compositions between sumo wrestlers, bodybuilders, and untrained males. It was found that sumo wrestlers were of course the heaviest, but they also had 10 kilograms more lean mass than the bodybuilders although they also had significantly more body fat too. So while the sumo wrestlers had more total lean mass, the bodybuilders had the highest proportion of lean mass at their body weight. So while bulking seems to be effective for muscle gain in an absolute sense, it is unclear if this has a long-term advantage. This is because since bulking generally results in fat gain, cutting will be required at some point to reduce body fat back to baseline levels. To demonstrate this point, let's take two hypothetical examples. One person maintains body weight for 12 months while performing resistance training. In theory, this person would gain muscle at a slow rate. The second person goes through a 6-month bulking and 6-month cutting cycle, starting and ending at the same weight while also resistance training. In theory, they would build muscle at a faster rate while bulking, but will also gain some body fat. Then when cutting to reduce body fat, they would likely lose some lean mass in the process. So at the end of the 12 months, who would see better body composition results? Well, we don't have any studies I am aware of which directly compare these two strategies. In most cases, I think that muscle growth would be fairly similar at the end of the day. However, in some cases, bulking might have an advantage. 
In beginners, or those returning to resistance training after a long layoff, the magnitude of muscle growth achieved can be equal or even greater than the total weight gained. In other words, bulking can accelerate muscle growth without any fat gain. This was seen in this study, which compared the effects of maintenance versus a large calorie surplus on muscle growth in untrained men performing resistance training. It was found that the two surplus groups gained around 3 kilograms each, with minimal changes in fat mass. Although, again, this is still only recommended if your body fat is currently in a reasonable place. If you have significant body fat to lose, the extra muscle growth is probably not your number one priority at the current moment. On that note, the other situation where bulking is appropriate is in those who are extremely lean. At some point, being too lean can not only be detrimental for muscle growth, but it can have negative implications for health. The point at which health begins to diminish is sometimes referred to as our lower intervention point. Basically, going below this threshold can inhibit reproductive function, decrease bone density, weaken immune function, cause sleep disruptions, and many other effects. This threshold can be different for each individual, but as a general rule, negative effects start to occur when body fat gets below around 10% in males or about 18% in females. If we are in this state, bulking is going to be beneficial. And although it seems counterintuitive, gaining body fat is actually what we want to do. We want to restore body fat to healthy levels, as some amount of fat is required for general health and function. It will also promote a more anabolic environment to allow greater muscle growth. For example, this study followed a male bodybuilder going through a contest preparation reaching an extreme level of leanness of around 5% body fat. During their leanness state, many hormonal and biomarkers increased or reduced beyond the normal reference range. Furthermore, this systematic review reported that in female physique athletes dieting down to extreme levels of leanness for a competition, all four cases in the literature experienced some form of disruption to their regular menstrual cycle. But who is this relevant to? Well, most people are probably not going to ever get to such extreme low levels of body fat in their lifetime. But some people might for a few different reasons. First are physique athletes, as seen in the mentioned case studies, who achieve extreme leanness for aesthetic purposes. These athletes diet down to very low body fat levels for competitions. However, these athletes will just get to this state for a short time frame to compete in a few competitions before gaining weight once again. It is extremely rare for these athletes to sustain this body fat level, with the common consensus that weight gain is necessary to restore health and gain muscle mass for long-term physique development. Another population susceptible to extremely low levels of body fat is other elite athletes where leanness is beneficial. In many athletes, a very low body fat percentage can be beneficial for sport performance. Athletes like distance runners, gymnasts, and various weight class restricted sports often get to extreme levels of leanness in preparation for competition. And while this is usually to benefit sport performance, it may not be ideal from a health perspective or for long-term performance improvements. So for these athletes, it may be sometimes beneficial to gain weight when they have no competitions in close proximity. This can help to restore and recover any negative effects of maintaining such a lean state. And in some cases, people in the general population who may just naturally stay very lean might also benefit from bulking. If you are someone who doesn't put on weight easily and you want to enhance muscle mass, then bulking might be beneficial. It may be that these individuals have never had the resources in terms of energy intake to maximize their muscle growth potential. Next, let's cover when it is a good idea to maintain body weight. Maintaining body weight is usually going to be appropriate for those who are at a relatively healthy body fat level and don't have any desire to gain or lose significant fat. This is generally going to be somewhere around 10-20% to body fat in males or around 18-30% to in females. You are still certainly able to gain muscle mass while maintaining body weight, but maybe just at a slightly slower rate compared with being in a surplus. For example, this study compared the effects of two different resistance training protocols while approximately maintaining body weight in males with an average of three years resistance training experience. 
The exact training protocols aren't really relevant. The point is that both groups approximately maintained body weight over a six week time frame and experienced simultaneous increases in quadriceps, biceps and deltoid muscle thickness. This also means you are going to experience some simultaneous fat loss, known as recomposition. But as mentioned earlier, the magnitude of fat loss achieved is going to be quite minimal since it will be equivalent to the amount of muscle mass you gain, which is usually not going to be all that significant over short term timeframes. For example, this study compared the effects of consuming two different protein intakes while performing resistance training in females. Again, the exact protocols and differences between groups isn't really relevant. The point is that both groups approximately maintained body weight while experiencing a simultaneous increase in fat-free mass with small reductions in fat mass. I think that maintenance is ultimately the goal for most people. We want to get to a relatively lean and healthy state and be able to maintain this long term. This allows us to continue building muscle over time if that is a goal. And it doesn't require cyclical bulking and cutting cycles, which can be impractical to manage with our everyday lives. A related concept that may influence our decision to bulk or cut is the concept of P-ratios. This refers to the proportion of body weight change that is due to changes in lean mass. It is essentially a measure of how much muscle you gain or lose relative to your overall body weight change. In other words, a higher P-ratio indicates more lean mass gain while bulking, while a lower P-ratio suggests more fat gain. For example, let's say two individuals gained 5 kilograms of body weight. If they were to gain 3 kilograms of lean mass and 2 kilograms of fat mass, that would be a higher P-ratio compared with gaining 3 kilograms of fat mass and 2 kilograms of lean mass. It is sometimes claimed that being leaner is favorable for muscle growth by promoting a superior P-ratio. In other words, if we were to bulk whilst in a leaner state, it would result in a greater amount of lean mass gained as a proportion of weight gain. Whereas bulking whilst at a higher body fat would result in a greater amount of fat gain as a proportion of the weight gained. So in practical terms, it is sometimes advised that to maximize muscle growth, we need to cut to a lean state first before bulking. The rationale for this hypothesis is often based on mechanistic reasons, such as being leaner makes us more insulin sensitive. And this is somewhat understandable since there isn't any direct evidence investigating this topic. However, this Stronger by Science article decided to do an informal regression analysis using resistance training studies which provided individual body fat percentage data of participants to investigate the P-ratios question. The analysis found a positive relationship between body fat percentage and the proportion of lean mass gained. In other words, those with a higher body fat generally experienced greater lean mass gains as a proportion of weight change. So based on this analysis, it seems that being leaner doesn't actually increase our P-ratio when bulking. Not only that, but being leaner actually seems to make our P-ratio worse compared with being at a higher body fat. So in practical terms, it doesn't seem necessary to cut just to potentiate further gains from bulking. And lastly, it is important to touch on environmental influences that can impact energy balance. In modern developed societies, our environment tends to promote weight gain. For one, we have essentially unlimited access to food. Food is also relatively cheap compared to our income. And it is more convenient than ever to obtain these foods. We also have access to ready-made meals which can be delivered straight to your door with a few simple clicks on a mobile screen. Our lives are also becoming increasingly sedentary. We rely less on physical activity for transport, and our occupations are becoming more automated. The result of this is that obesity rates are increasing at a fairly rapid rate. People are gaining weight without even intending to do so. This report found that adults tend to gain on average around half to one kilogram or about one to two pounds per year. And while this may seem modest, this can accumulate to significant weight gain over adulthood. So the point is that if no specific strategies are implemented to prevent weight gain, most people will probably end up being in a net surplus over time. This means that many people may not ever need to intentionally bulk. We may just focus on maintaining body weight, and even then, an unintentional surplus is likely. And if unwanted weight gain does happen to occur over time, then an intentional cutting phase may be necessary.
So in summary, should you bulk cut or maintain? Cutting is going to be the best option for those who have more body fat than they currently desire. This could be for health, aesthetics, or athletic performance. In most cases, it is recommended to cut when body fat is greater than around 20% for males or around 30% for females. Intentional bulking is not usually recommended for most people since those living in modern developed societies tend to naturally gain weight without intentional effort. However, this may be a preferred option in a few unique scenarios. First is for those who want to maximize muscle growth. Weight gain certainly helps you gain more absolute lean mass. However, it is unclear if this would be more effective than maintaining body weight after going through a subsequent cutting cycle. Beginners may be a unique exception to this, where bulking can result in pure lean mass gains due to their high sensitivity to muscle growth. Bulking is also recommended for those who are at a very low body fat level, where it may be detrimental for health. Generally, those less than around 10% body fat in males, or less than around 18% in females, may fall into this category. Maintaining is appropriate for those who just want to sustain a healthy body composition. If you are already at a healthy body fat, and you don't have the desire to gain or lose significant body fat, then maintenance may be a good approach. This is generally going to be somewhere around 10-20% to body fat for males, or around 18-30% to for females. Maintaining while resistance training can also permit further muscle growth and fat loss, but not to the same magnitude as bulking and cutting respectively. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.